Well, in order to illustrate the topic for today, we're going to be talking about what church is right and whether or not you should go to church anyway. And you guys came to church today, so I think probably you think that it might be a good idea now and then. However, there are a lot of people next to you that did not come. And uh, so we need, to, we need to somehow learn, you know, what is important about church. No, actually, seriously, we're in a series of, of messages that we're calling Big Questions, and we're dealing with some of the big questions of faith and life. And one of the big questions is, which church should I go to? Why should I go to church? Which church do I know is the right one? Things like that. And so I pulled together just a couple video clips that I thought might illustrate this. So if you guys can make sure we got the sound on and everything, let's see if we can show this first one here. My friends, a Satan is a liar and a cheat, and you will do anything to keep you busy with other things apart from Jesus Christ. And one of the biggest things that he keeps people busy with is church. My friend, you do not need church. You need a relationship with Jesus Christ. That is what you need. You need a relationship with Jesus every moment of your life. People will tell you, you got to go to church. That is a lie from Satan, my friend. You got to go to Jesus and you must follow Jesus. Jesus said, follow me. He never said, go to church. He said, follow me. It is not important that you go to church. It is not important that you fellowship with Christians. It is important that you fellowship with Jesus Christ. So the question that I have is, is this guy right? I mean, granted, he looks a little bit like Santa Claus, but is he right about that whole idea you don't need to go to church thing? You just need a relationship with Jesus. And you can do that just by praying and, and listening to Jesus on your own. Is that right? You know, there are a lot of people who would simply say, keep Jesus and get rid of the church. And then there are other people who say, because of how bad the church is, get rid of God also. If the church is so bad, then obviously they're following a bad God or they're following no God at all. And so that was one of the major reasons that a fellow by the name of Bertrand Russell decided that he wasn't going to be a Christian. And so I've got a little audio clip here of uh, Bertrand Russell telling why he is not a Christian. And hopefully this thing is, is going to work. I trimmed it down to about 40 seconds. Uh, see if you can, if this thing works. That is the idea, that we should all be wicked if we did not hold to the Christian religion. It seems to me that the people who have held to it have been for the most part extremely wicked. You find this curious fact that the more intense has been the religion of any period and the more profound has been the dogmatic belief, the greater has been the cruelty and the worse has been the state of affairs. In the so-called ages of faith, when men really did believe the Christian religion in all its completeness, there was the Inquisition with its tortures. There were millions of unfortunate women burned as witches and there was every kind of cruelty practiced upon all sorts of people in the name of religion. You find, as you look around the world, that every single bit of progress in humane feeling, every improvement in the criminal law, every step toward the diminution of war, every step toward better treatment of the colored races, or every mitigation of slavery, every moral progress that there has been in the world, has been consistently opposed by the organized churches of the world. I say quite deliberately that the Christian religion, as organized in its churches, has been and still is the principal enemy of moral progress in the world. Now that's pretty harsh stuff. I mean, there are a lot of people, you probably know some people, who would simply say, because of the Christians that I know, I could never be one. Because of the churches that I've attended, I could never go to another one. And there are some people who will go to exorbitantly great lengths to avoid all things church. Watch this one last clip. A seven-year-old boy who went to great lengths to get out of going to church. He took the family car and led police on a low-speed chase. Sandra Yee has just returned from Plain City with tonight's top story. <laughs> well, Deanie and Bruce, the boy told deputies it was just too hot to go to church, so he went for a joyride instead, and his parents had no idea their car or their kid were missing. <laughs> okay, so... Um, 
Anybody that you know could probably come up with an excuse to not go to church. The question that we have is for those people who actually have a sense of uh, desire to find out what God wants for their lives, who have an honest question, we want to engage with them, and I want to help you understand this issue of which church is right. Just to remind you of the series that we're in, this is the series that I'm calling Big Questions. If you grab your note sheet out of your bulletin, you can see at the top of that, there is a little uh, line that explains to you, you can SMS messages to me, you can send text messages to me, and you can email questions to me. We have Wi-Fi here in this building. It's called LCC is the Wi-Fi, and if you have a Wi-Fi enabled device, you can send an email, or if you want to use your phone or something, you can send a text message to Jesus99, and at the end of the service, I'm going to answer some of those questions. Um, so if you want to ask any questions at all, if while I'm talking something strikes you as interesting or you want to follow up on that, send a message to me. We'll deal with the questions at the end, and I'll see how many I can answer. All right. So we're in this series where we're trying to deal with these questions, and the questions that we've been dealing with are things like, why is there evil in the world? Things like, how can God be good and still allow evil? Or last week we addressed this question of, is the Bible accurate and can we trust the Bible? But each week what we've done is we've taken the question that people ask and we've recognized that it's actually kind of a smokescreen question to the real question under the surface. The real question, what I'm calling the big questions of life, are the questions that impact me as much as they do the person I ask. So if I ask someone, how can a good God allow evil in the world? I can be given an answer, and then once I've, given, once I've been given the answer, I say, well, you know what, I don't like that, or you know what, that's not good enough for me, or something along those lines. But there is a question that I can ask that the answer will change me. And that question is, can I trust God? Knowing that bad things happen in this world, can I trust Him? Because the answer to that will affect me. It will change the direction of my life. Or last week, it wasn't just, is the Bible true, but can I trust it? And we looked at some of the various ways that we can trust the Bible, some of the various reasons that God has given to us that we can trust the Bible from translation issues, transmission issues, uh, the authorship issues, things like that. And if you'd like to know more about that, last week I gave a really just circuitous, quick moving assessment to the situation you can listen to online. But this week I have an even larger topic to discuss and it is so big on my heart that I had absolutely no idea how much stuff to take out. And so what we did is we took out a couple songs. And so I've got a little bit of extra time this morning, and I'm just going to try to blaze through this stuff as fast as I can, but we're going to deal with this question of which church is right, but actually the big question underneath that is, of course, can I trust the church? If you're taking 